there's some healing going on inside me. I can feel it very strong in my vibration. I go up and down and round and everywhere. I laugh, I cry, I shout out in despair. But I know it's a part of the process I have to bear. My emotions are helping me see myself very clear. Ache, ache, hola. Hola, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome. This is Sacral Chakra Healing. Your sexual nature, your divine power. I am, I'm Minister SCT 13. And with me, I have I'm Minister Symphony from Mother of Pearls Healing. Hola. Welcome, I'm Minister Symphony. Good evening, good evening. And we also have on deck, I'm Minister Odeyemi from the Great Mother's Ancestral Palace Healing Ministries. Ache, welcome. Thanks. Today, we are talking about healing and forgiveness, forgiving our vaginas for being hoes. This is what I titled the podcast for today. And it was interesting because I sent it out to Michaela, my daughter, and um, she was saying, she was like, mom, I didn't, you know, the she was just really surprised by the title. And then she taught me that what I was using was a hyperbole, you know, an exaggeration. And it it is an exaggeration, but it's not because this is what happens to to the woman, the divine feminine. This is what happens what has been happening since we've came onto this space. And you know, everything happens for a reason and everything has its time and it's our time now. So it's uh, it's important for us to face all of the ugliness and the things that we're called and the things that are said about us and the things that we say about ourselves and how we judge ourselves and how we are judged. All of that. It's time to release it all. And that's what we're doing right now. We're releasing all of it. See, the reason why it is so harsh, you know, it's like, it's harsh. It's harsh. For the woman, in many cultures, you you can investigate and see what happens when a woman is not, you know, loses her virginity. And they know they know the power, but they hide the knowledge from the women. And they use it against the women. But see, here's the here's the wonderful thing. The woman, the womb stress, is an organic being that when she connects to her organic source, all of the truth spills right in. It's, it's already inside of us. It's inside of all of us. But we have to look for it. We have to, you know, we have to make the choice to allow it to seep through, to do the rituals, the techniques, the formulas, the uh, exercises that needs to be done so that we're able to make the proper connections so that we can gain the information that we need so that we could utilize it in our experience so that we can gain the wisdom through that practice. Everyone has access. But see, what's happening on the planet now is that you know, some people know it and some people don't. And the people that do know it, a lot of people are denying it and they're still trying to hide it. But the only solution to what's happening in the world today is the divine feminine, the nurturer, the mother, 
The mother is here to heal the planet. And so this is why it's waking up in all of us. So we have to embrace all of that, that, that prostitute, the whole, the whore, the, uh, all that, whatever it is, embrace that, embrace that because it is us. We birthed it all. We birthed all of it. And this is why it's so powerful. And this is why they try so hard to demean this power because it is the creation of everything. And you know it instinctively, but the information has been projected onto the entire planet, not just the women or not just the, the men. It's a program that has been designed in the matrix to, to help keep the control of the people. And when you have the divine feminine that's working with this power to keep the people suppressed, then yeah, that's a great power. But, you know, people have been waking up for a long time. And so the sooner that we're able to embrace this part of ourselves, you know, whatever it is that we're calling it, embrace it, forgive it, forgive yourself. And when you forgive yourself, man, it just starts. I have to, I have to, I must give credit to the source that started this spiral of healing for me and it was in the grand rising of the matriarch. The grand rising of the matriarch started, I want to say that it started in April. I'm not exactly sure. I know we have, I'm in the store, me in the house and she could um, tell me that for sure. But it started with, or maybe we started the, the sacral, the, the, the chakra cleanse in April. And then it was shortly after that. I remember that because a lot of things happen after that nine chakra cleanse. And so when that started happening, there was an episode on the grand rising of the matriarch where they talked about forgiveness. I'm Minister Reddy, I said to I'm Minister Reddy, and I'm Minister Odidiemi were talking about forgiveness and forgiving yourself. And for a person that has been existing in this realm of spirituality and doing my healing and you know I got an ego and all of this stuff you know you think that okay I'm you know all right I've forgiven I'm all the people that have you know wronged me I've forgiven and and you know then I you know I'm I recognize my sexual trauma and so I did my forgiveness for that and I and I was so grateful for that because that was like oh that was just amazing right that was the beginning of everything for me but little did I know. Well, like I knew, you always know that there's layers. I mean, we always know that there's layers, but you just don't really, when you think that you know something, <clears throat> you don't really <clears throat> know what you don't know until you know what you didn't know. Did that make sense? So it was something that when when I heard it again, and it was very specific because I was instructed to write a letter and to express this to the people that I need to to you know to forgive, right? And I had done a process like this already before, but there was something about it that was different. I can't be super specific on it right now. You got to go back and check out that that um that episode but i decided to do it and i decided to do it for my family i did it for my mother i did it for my sisters you know the people because i've been um you know on this on, on my own path for a very long time we'll just say that okay um and so in this path there's a lot of people that just were not i was no longer connected to and there's some ties that needed to be tied for my own healing for my own health you know it, it definitely wasn't anything that was like you know, oh, I want to look good and, you know, for the Lord <laughs> and do this forgiveness thing so I can look good. It was really, truly something that I, you know it inside you when things are missing or when things are incomplete and when you get a message to do something and you know when it's necessary to do what you're being instructed to do. So I did that and it was it was just the beginning of everything. It was beginning of the beginning of another level of healing that took me to where I am today and is in a space of recognizing further 
who I am, what I came here to do, my purpose, and the power of my healing. And I say the power of my healing because my I learned through this. We've been on tour since October. Um, actually, it's been longer than that, but um, we started actively on the tour in October. And about a month ago, I received the information <clears throat> of my sexual trauma, of my abuse when I was a little girl. I always thought that it was eight years old, but it turns out that it was actually five years old. My sister confirmed that for me. And um, I say and gracias to my sister for that confirmation because it was very powerful. And in that moment when that information was released, you know, I, I mean, I took it because, you know, at this point, I'm an adult, right? I'm 53 years old. That happened when I was five, right? So I'm thinking, but 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 like it shocked me. And I kept saying, why? Why? You know, I, I thought it was eight. It was only th- uh, three years different. So why is this bothering me in this way? Or why is this inciting me in this way like this? And then I learned about, and when I, when I tell you that I learned about the what happens to the mind of a child when they are abused before the age of seven. I mean, it was, it's the most traumatic thing that you could imagine. And it's something that they don't, you don't come out of. You don't come out of that. You end up in prostitution. You end up um, just suicidal. You end up, I mean, it's very, and, and I'm not saying that you don't come out of that because I say I'm an example of that, that yeah, you do. But everybody doesn't come out in their right mind. Absolutely not. The ones that do. And so for me, that realization right there, what it did was it confirmed that, no, I I have to talk about this. And I'm here for a reason. And I have to do this by any means necessary. What has to happen so that this could be delivered is going to happen. And I received that. And, you know, like, I'm with it. I'm down for my mission. Always have been. That comes first. I come first in this mission. And that is, you know, to say that as a woman, as a wombstress, as a goddess, as a mother, to say that is like, I can say it in my power. And it feels great to say that, by the way. But I also feel the strings and the strains and the residue of the foreign thought, you know, that old thought that was like, ooh, how dare you even say that? A mother could never be put herself first. That's selfish. You know, a mother, to be first, how dare you say something like that? Like, you got to come in here sacrificing just because you're a woman. That's the idea. And that is what has been happening I know since I can remember. And it's just a wonderful celebration that we are having through the midst of all of these opportunities that we're getting to evolve. It is a celebration and we are celebrating this time because we have incarnated many, 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 many a times to be here now. I mean, it's a symphony was just reminding me of a conversation that she overheard of Brother Hayes talking about you you tell him what 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 they were talking about. I'm in a symphony, please. Um well Rod Hayes was just speaking of the cycles. Um he was talking about the ending of the Kali Yuga cycle and um beginning of um I guess what we would call the golden age. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that that during the specific time that many yoginis or different uh, yogis or what we would call um, uh, prophets for different cultures have come and tried to come so that they can um, be a part of this time lapse supposedly happening, happening on Monday from, I believe, um, 8 p.m., Sunday night to 8 um, 8, 8 a.m. Monday morning. So it's supposed to be a time lapse where the 
um, Earth is aligned with the galactical center of the Milky Way point. And um, it's supposed to be the ending of a 36,000 year cycle and basically the the end of the ending of days in the beginning of a new time. And he said that many, many people like Jesus and Muhammad, and they all tried to come Buddha so that they can be part of this process that we are going through right now. Okay. Thank you so much for that. And with that, and I'm, I'm so glad that you said that. And you also, as you were saying it, you, the word that, that kept sounding out to me was supposed, right? And so I just want to give some clarification on that. So for me, and I'm speaking from my experience, I know that there is something very powerful that is happening in the world. They call it the golden age. They call it Kali Yuga. They call it the age of Aquarius. They call it, there's so many different names for it. And y'all already know how I feel about labels, right? So, what is important to identify is that within yourself, there's a change that is happening and it's reflecting outside in your experience. So the chaos, the highness, the lowness, all of these different energies that are happening on the planet are happening within us because it's us. It's We are this planet. It is as within as above, so below, as within, so without, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it is. So it's important for all of us to connect to this great mother. And the easiest way to do it is go ahead and just put your feet in the soil and hug a tree and ask her what time it is. Ask her what is happening right now and allow her to tell to tell you so that when you speak about these things, when we speak about these things, that we are speaking from what we know is happening because we know it because we feel it because it is coming from within us to say what it is. Because what is happening now in this time, there is so much information, disinformation that is happening. And I by no means, by no means am I saying that anybody is quote unquote wrong about what it is that they are speaking. Okay. What I am saying is that during this time, at this time, is it is important that the information that you are living by, that you are grounding yourself in, is information that you are receiving from within. Because see, there's nobody to blame for anything but you. Your life is your responsibility. Right. And so during this time, what is happening is it, just so many openings. It's a wonderful celebration. And what happens at a celebration and at a party? People are at, at, are at ease. Right. They kicking it. They chilling. They celebrating everything. Your guard is down. Right. So what is happening during that time is these energies are coming in and they are infiltrating other energies. And so you have belief systems that are still trying to hold on to what they have done for thousands, what, 36,000 years, did you say? You know what I'm saying? I don't know as far as that, because time, I don't really relate all that much like that. I know I got to use it sometimes, you know what I'm saying? But however long it was, it was a very, 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 very long time. And so these energies, they don't want to look. They crying, they battling, they fighting. They don't want to go, but they know that they have to. So right now, what are they doing? They are planting seeds in others that are in this awakening process. Because when you're in an, in this awakening process and you're in this stage where you are open and truly receiving the word, this and and this vibration, mira lo que está pasando. Look at what's happening. So these energies are starting to use people that you start to gain trust in. And you're like, oh, they're saying the right things and they're saying things that match with what I've been studying and what I've been reading and blah, 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 blah. And then these people, because this is already has been done already in the media, they did it on a small scale. Now they're using that same technique on a grander scale, right? And so they're using these people that you trust because your consciousness trust, they're saying the right words, they're using the right labels, they're on the right shows, everybody is, you know, talking about them, they seem to be the popular thing. So most people believe it look I have a rule in my life when they do when they go that way I go the other 
all the time, all the time, all the time. And when I see too many people going that way, then I'm going to go the other way and the other other way and, you know, take a little curve over here. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like this on, on this path, you came here to prove your own divinity. You know what I'm saying? It has to be what you believe. Because the moment that it's not what you believe and you start believing what somebody else believes, then you're going to start living their faith. And in, to have this power and abuse it like that, to me, would be nuts. And so this is why I say the importance of, and, and this is why our vaginas are so important because it gives you that, um, that sense. That's how you know. Like people have been, look, just got to keep it real. They've been nothing like crazy. You know what I'm saying? They've been completely losing it, creating chaos. They're not recognizing the power of that sacred energy exchange. They don't. And we know they don't. Nobody does. And when I say nobody, you know, obviously, you know, somebody does. Some people do. Right? But let me go back to just saying really quick what happens with these energies. So they're going to they're going to mix in some information and then some in misinformation. And this is not even by their own will. I am not saying that any of these people of any of any people that are sharing information, any of us that are sharing information when we share information and especially those of us that have a gift to share and to speak and to inspire all of these different things that people give labels to this particular kind of energy. When you have that, right, what happens is, is it's a fire. It's a passion that's so strong. I believe so much in everything that I say and everything that I know in my heart. I believe it with my whole heart that, oh, that's why this passion comes out. And anyone who is swayed just a little, if they hear me, they'll be swayed my way. Absolutely, 100%. That's just how this energy works. Everyone has the ability to hone this energy. My experience has allowed me to be able to master this energy. And that's why I'm able to get on this mic and speak the way that I do. But I recognize the power of that, of what this is. And so I'm also here to let you know, don't you trust anyone that has a gift that is not within you? You understand what I'm saying? Because at any moment, from look, from yesterday to today, I am a different motherfucker. I'm a different person. I'm a different being. I am different. And I will continue to be different and change and evolve to whatever that evolution means to me. To me. To me. Okay? And so this is important because this is what I came here to do is to live in this experience as myself and master myself, hence the name Master Vibration 13. So I'm doing what I came here to do. So I have to honor that. And in honoring that, it is telling you the truth that you had to find it within yourself. And if your frequency aligns with what I'm doing, then we meet until it doesn't. And just because it aligns right now, it doesn't mean that it's going to align tomorrow. And that doesn't diminish the role that we had in each other's space. That just means it's time to part ways because the frequency has shifted. And so this is happening for everyone. And so this is why it is so important that when you receive these messages, whatever they are, that you go in with yourself, by yourself. In meditation, speak to the most high within you so that you can find out what it is and what's really happening. Because let me tell you something. It is so easy. The truth is the new drug. The truth is the new high. That's the new weed. That's the look. When people feel the truth, man, when when you start hearing somebody say something that you haven't heard anybody say and you've been saying that shit for years and all of a sudden now somebody's saying it, you're like, oh, oh my God. Oh, God. oh my goodness. Yes, 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 yes. Give me some more. Give me some more. Who else is saying it? Who else can say it? Who else? For me, I'm just saying for me. 
it is wonderful when there are people that are matching in the frequency of the truth that I, that, you know, that's in my path that I'm experiencing. But I also know the truth of the importance of that solitude and being able to think for myself and be a, being able to make choices for myself. Part of this healing and part of this mastery is being able to listen to the voices in your head and be able to differentiate when it's an angel, when it's the most high, when it's your ego, when it, you know, you, you have to be able to know these things and you can't know these things when it's loud. You, you, you can't know these things when you're talking all the time. And when there's so much noise going on in the world and you're taking no time and no space for yourself to be with yourself, you can't know it. And so this is why all of this chaos, like, okay, so I'm just going to break it down as simple as it is. Yes. Pussy power is what has made the world exactly what it is because we are the creators of everything. Everything that's been created under an under an ignorant mind, now this is what we have manifested. This is what has come to be. This is the residual of our past thoughts and action and it begins with the thought of the woman. So our vaginas and forgiving ourselves and forgiving our vaginas and forgiving our wombs. It's not just a process where you're listening to what I'm saying right now and you're like, okay, now I'm going to look at my Yoni and I'm going to put a mirror on it. I'm going to say, Yoni, I forgive you. Oh, wait, I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to put a, a Yoni egg inside and I'm going to do the kegels and I'm going to squeeze and I'm going to do these practices and then it's done. And I'm telling you this because I've done all of that. I did all of it. And I thought I was done, but I wasn't. We're never done. How about that? <laughs> you, you know that time? You remember You remember back in the old days where if somebody had a, a, a collar, the, the, the black suit with the collar, and they had, or they wore a certain attire, you know, they were like holier than thou, and they were, you know, I'll I put it like this. I'm from the, the, the Caribbean, right? And in, in, and in my, I grew up Catholic. And in that belief system, right, and in my family anyway, we believe that if you had a, a nun or a priest in your family, that means you had a direct connection to God because now like, it's like you in the, you know, it's nepotism and, you know, in the heavens, right? And so now you got to, you got to weigh in because the, the person in your family, and it was just always so crazy to me because I was like, how in the Sam hell does that make sense? But I was just a little girl. So, you know, I, I'm supposed to know anything like that. But anyway, it's, it's. It's not like that anymore. The mask is off. You know, who you are is who you are. And everyone has the power of Jesus, the Buddha, all of these things that people have been worshiping, you know, everything that they look at and they idolize. People don't recognize that that comes from within. That that you're looking at out there, that's, that's still you. It's all you. But people don't see that. And it's okay, but I mean, a lot of people are seeing it now, but it's not, you know, it, it's not your business what they're seeing or what they're not seeing. Your business is you, your business is you and your business is you. And when you take care of the business of you, everything else gets taken care of seamlessly. Like everything falls into play, like, you know, like a little domino, like, you know, a nice little set. The dominoes just roll off and everything is all cute and it's, yeah, that's what happens. That's what happens when you take care of you. Because, see, people have been programmed to believe that now they the, fuck yourself and then everybody else, oh, you know, it's okay. You know, I ain't shit, but no, I'm going to sacrifice and I'm going to give this to you because you're so much more important than me. And this is what the divine feminine has been, you know, I mean, it's in books, it's in writings, it's in songs, it's, you know, it, it's everywhere all the time. Like you can't listen to a song about you got to, oh, you know, and I am not a, whatever they call it, a feminist, none of those things. Y'all already know what it is. It is just a matter of truth. And it gets to a point where you get tired of being lied to. And so it is not to trust anybody on the outside for what? What you going to trust somebody on the outside for? What you going to trust some man or woman telling you something? The, like for real the information that we are receiving must be received by yourself 
So when you're looking and listening to everything on the outside, go on and bring it to your meditation if you're meditating. And if you're not meditating, get out of here. Get out of here if you're not doing that. There is no time for that. Look, the sacral chakra healing is not going to be motherfucking pretty. It's not supposed to be. It never has been. But you know what it is? It is what you make it. It is what you make out of it because it is your experience. It is your experience to be had and to be molded and to be transformed by you because you are the one that's creating the experience anyway. Every single human that comes into this experience creates their reality through their vibrational frequency. That vibrational frequency is stimulated through their experience. And when they got when when they first come in, they're being guided through their parents and their family and all of these things that have already been in, put into place to control people. Right? All of that has been put into place. And so then when they get to the age of 13, 14 or whatever, at that point, yep, they're like, all right, they're programmed. You can put them out there because see, before the age of seven, right? Anything you put in there, that shit is locked in. It is locked in. And so now they can trust that the program is working and they're out there and, you know, doing what the program does. It's been going on forever. So why would you think that a baptism or, you know, getting into some water, going to some priest or some priestess or whatever that, you know, that told you, oh, you are divine now. You have been uh, converted and you are, oh, you got, you got your paperwork. Is that what it is? You got your, 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 your status. Is, is that what the, the, the noble, whatever signed your shit. And then, so now you're whole now. Do, do, do you understand, overstand, recognize where it is that I'm going with this? Like when you recognize that you are an infinitaire, an infinite being, you're not relying on nobody's paperwork. You're not relying on nobody's validation. You're not waiting for somebody to tell you who or what you are. You know what it is. And when you know what it is, that information starts coming to you directly. And right now at this time, the order of the day is to be with yourself. Somebody shooting out there. Or they sell it all. Oh no, they put in fire. They they doing firecrackers in celebration of what I just said. Look at that, Mira. Ache. Santa Maria Jesus. <laughs> you gotta turn things around when you just you I don't know what's going on out there. But that's not my business. My business is here right now. This is a time like no other. And nobody can tell you who you are. You have to figure it out. And it is not time for everybody. Everybody is in their own time, in their own way. And what was really ru ruling now, and this is why everybody's talking so much about energy and vibration and these words are so hot right now. Because it can't be denied. The frequency of what is happening, the rhythm of what is happening cannot be denied. And it's not, <laughs> it is not, look, it is not escaping anybody. People are seeing so many empires fall. People are seeing couples break up that they never thought would break up, right? Right? They're seeing all of these things, all of these transformations happening. People having disagreed, you know, disagreeing that they never thought would ever disagree with them. Mothers and, and their children and all of this separation, all of this stuff is happening. And it's happening because of each individual. It is not, uh, you know, just one person that is making a decision. Everybody's feeling, everybody's fre frequency and vibration is what's creating what is happening right now. So if people were to recognize the power within themselves and would start doing something about it, then something will be done about it and something is being done about it. But here's the other thing, right? This is not how, you, you know how it takes, you know, it takes patience and times, you know, anybody that knows about stones, you know how long it takes to make a diamond, right? A diamond in that darkness. 
you know, and that pressure, you know how long that takes, right? So what, so what do you think? This is going to take how, however long is necessary. Like there is no even, there's no rush for the healing. You know, a lot of people, they want to get to a healing process and they're like, I want to heal. And, and they start their healing process and they'll be like looking at the clock. Like, okay, am I healed? Am I done? Is it done? Okay, I've been meditating for 365 days now. Okay, am I finished? Is it ready? Am I there? Is it? That's not how it works, baby. This healing is forever. This healing is continuous. There are levels, this evolution. I, I, I don't even think like, what is even the word healing? I, I, I'm going to have to look that up. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a feeling. It is a feeling. It is a feeling that you have and you go by that and you trust that and you develop these things within yourself so that you could build this confidence. I have to say this. This is very important. So horoscope, Sagittarius, Virgo, Leo, Pisces, Aries, Gemini, all of that. Do you not know that is all of us where it's all in all of us? Do you not know that all of that exists in every individual? There are certain levels of it. And I'm not you know what? I'm not going to start. I am not going to keep saying what I'm not because I know that I am. Okay. So I'm tapping into the astrological knowledge that is coming in through me. And I will tell you that I recognize that everything has its equation and its formula and all of these different things. But in this society, they have, they have used everything to separate us from everything. And put, you know, oh, this person needs to go with this person and this person and these people match together and that person. How are you going to tell some infinite power beings, infinionaires, what goes and what doesn't go? Because when you know, you know. And when you know who you are, you cannot say that you are the I am, that you are everything, that you recognize that you are a direct extension of that source and then put limits on yourself. That's ridiculous. That sounds crazy. Anyway, y'all, I went on a little tangent. Hi, I'm Minister Ordeyemi. Hi, I'm Minister Symphony. Greetings. <laughs> I'm back now. It's been a... It's been a very expansive time for me. And this... I was very mad at at what I learned about, you know, at, at you know who abused this little girl. You know, little Mari. And you know, it's a thing that when you go through that process of healing that sometimes what happens is that a person will will say, "Well, where was my mom?" Where was my dad? Where were my brothers? Where were my sisters? Where were my... And so they keep looking for other people to blame and other people to, you know, and, and, and I'm not going to say that they're necessarily looking for that. It's the, I, I think that that's just a natural thing that happens when you start looking for those things. But when you're able to bring it to your mind and recognize that what happens to you, 100% of what happens to you in your life is because of you you start going a little deeper. And because I had, because I have the knowledge of why I was abused as a little girl, it is because of my my information. It is because of my sexual energy. It is because of the power that I came into this incarnation with. It is because when you come in knowing your power and exuding your power, it will be abused if it's not protected. And that's what happens to many, but it's not at the fault of anybody's, like it's nobody's fault. It is what had to happen for what is happening. And I cannot accept the beauty and the graciousness and all of the wonderful things of what is happening in the world if I can't accept and receive and love Everything that was part of it that made it so. And that darkness, that darkness, that alone little girl that existed in her whole childhood by herself with these little secrets and these little things that just continued to happen to her. 
It's all for a reason. And I'm grateful that I was, that I chose, that I chose this path to come into. And it was what it needed to be. I think that for so long, I didn't want to, I started in 2013 was when, you know, the name Sex Energy Goddess and all of these things started coming and I started going into recognizing this sacral, this sacred prostitute, this whore, this, you know, this energy that existed in me and where it came from and what it was. And I learned so much about it that I felt, you know, really, I I felt really comfortable with the information and I shared a lot of the information, but then there was always a stop. It was always like, okay, I'm not, okay, I'm done. Okay. You don't have to share no more. It was kind of like, I knew what the journey was, but I was like, okay, I did my part and all right. You know, I always knew that I had to share, you know, that, that healing and, and working from sexual trauma in the capacity that I was doing, I knew that it was something that I had to do, but I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. And so when I did the first part, you know, in 2013, from 2013 to I think about 2015 or 16, you know, I put in a lot of work in those years. And then it started fading out because I was like, okay, no, I, I, I'm done. I did that. Okay, we don't have to talk about that anymore. And I was like, you know, like you, you, when you when you are accustomed to hiding things or putting things away so that you don't compartmentalizing, you become an expert at doing that so you can do it really easily. And so I, I made an excuse for myself to not look in there anymore. You know, I said, I already did that. You know, so I don't, you know, I'm ignoring these feelings that I'm getting and I don't have to do it because I already did it. So bye. And so I put it away. I tucked it away. But in tucking away that feeling, something still kept nudging me. And it was like, you still got to talk about this. And I didn't really understand why I was so hesitant to talk about it until now. And now that I'm aware, now that I know there is nothing that's bothering me. There is nothing that's saying to me, um, Oh, okay, you're done talking about it. So now you don't have to talk about it no more. Like I'll talk about it as long as I need to. There's not, you know, I may shed a tear, mostly not. You know what I'm saying? It's like done that. I did it, you know, but I'm not saying not to cry and not to do the things that you need to do. I'm just saying that because I trusted, I was prepared for the journey all the way and it, and it continues. So now I have an even deeper, bigger trust in my creator. Because I know she got me. And I know that everything that I go through, I'm good. I know that because I've been good. And it's going to continue to be. And so what does that do? It raises my energy level. It raises the power that I have within me. Because now a thought is immediately realized. It's realized in my th- in my mind. Okay, so I have the thought, right? And then when that thought is is in my vision in my third eye and I see that thought right now it's seeping in it's riding in through my system and I am knowing it it's not even a thing of I'm seeing it now oh I believe it because I see it I I made it I made that thought I made that vision so I know it's real and I know it's in me and I know that it's going to be realized it's realized right now because I'm seeing it right now and I feel it I feel it I feel it because I know it and now what do I do gracias gracias Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I wait and I'm patient and I'm still. And then I keep creating because I already know that's coming. I just did that. There's no doubt in my mind at all. Time. There's no time. It takes whatever time is necessary. Like who made up that word anyway? Like what is that? So these are all of the things that, and this is me in my world. Yeah, I'm the weird lady. I'm the weird one. But I am the weird, happy lady. How about that? Because I see it for myself. And the experiences that I have, I promise you, if I tell you what these experiences are, you will not believe it because you did not have the experience. And is that unbelievable? Is that out of this world? But I know that it's real because it's my experience. 
And that's why it is so important to tie it all together. I can't, I cannot leave anything out of this formula of what self-mastery is. I can't say, oh, well, they'll figure it out. You know, I, I don't have to talk about all of the deepest sexual. I mean, I don't have to give you all the details of the things that I've gone through. That's not even necessary. Because whatever is deep and dark for me, that's me. And everyone's darkness is their own darkness that they got to get themselves out of. And you can't get yourself out of it if you're not sitting in it. So with this awareness, I realize, see, you call yourself an infinionaire and it's going to take you on that path of what an infinionaire is. A person that attracts wealth infinitely because they live in their passion. A person that attracts wealth infinitely because they know that they are that infinite wealth. They are that source. They are the money. They recognize that whatever is needed sounds so nice because I'm speaking from now. You got to go get your own. You got to find your own truth, whatever that is for you. And see, it doesn't have to be drinking minute agua as mineral water from Mexico. But I, I just want to um, chime in real quick. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to just uh, make sure that I had got the message out because I don't know if I was clear earlier. But basically um, what Brad Hayes was speaking on was um, just setting down the war energy and to pick up the love energy. That's so true. for me, the forgiveness of my vagina um, for any any decisions that were made that were not in alignment with sacred sacredness to the womb and the honoring of my temple mm. is um, so pivotal at this moment for me to let go of mm. my war energy, to let go of my resentment and my anger. So... I think that it's a very opportune time to, like you said, to basically be able to say, yes, I am first. I come first. Um, and not in a selfish way mm -hmm. as if, you know, you're above others, yeah. but in an exact selfless way that you're above others because without having a cup full, you're unable to serve. Mm -hmm. So by looking deeply into the womb and, allowing the mistakes or the past or whatever it is, the present, whatever's going on to actually come up surface and actually um, wash it away to forgive yourself is like the most important thing at this moment. Mm -hmm. So for me, I just, I, I want to say thank you for sharing um, your story with us because it takes, um, a tremendous amount of strength to just be able to speak on certain topics, period, let alone, um, you know, guide us through the healing process. So thank you for that. But I just wanted to make sure that I, I was heavy on the energy part. It wasn't really so much on the date and time. Yes, yes, yes. It wasn't so much on the, the date and time and, and, you know, the specifics of who or what, but it was just so much more of the yeah. energy, the energy of love just yes being able to embody all that is whether it be good or bad and not label this so mm -hmm. but just to perceive all as just part of the womb of earth and then part of the womb of the galaxies and just part of the womb of all so to be able to just not only forgive ourselves but to forgive others and to let go of all the strings that are tied to the sexual trauma. That's true. So, Thank you. I just wanted to be heavy on the, the energy of the switching of the energy uh -huh. was basically I was the and time it, period that way. And I do want to also say that I appreciate uh, Brother Rod Hayes and uh, Brother Rich. I believe he's the host that was hosting that particular podcast and the and all of the men and women that have been sharing information and you know I my, my intention is only to 
make sure that people recognize where the source should always come from and what they should trust and not anything against anyone at all. And, you know, I love everyone for the efforts that they have um, put, whether, you know, they thought they were doing the right thing and then realized later, whatever, you know, it's just so much in the mix of all of this information age. So, you know, I, I, I believe everybody should be honored and, and I do. So thank you. And, and thank you for that. I'm in a symphony. Um, it's important that I address the men um, because I, I will be quite frank and honest and say that there has definitely been a part of me that has had this anger towards men in a great deep way for so many reasons. And I had to release that and I had to let that go. I'm in a symphony. We're talking about that anger. It's like an anger that exists and that you, you, you take lifetime after lifetime and like it sits there until you're able to heal it. And like when I'm talking about lifetime after lifetime, I'm talking about remembering being killed, remembering dying, remembering being abused, remembering, you know, having these thoughts and having these things that just, it's just a weird, uh, a weird energy. And I have to say to the men that as we do this work on ourselves, it is for you that we do what we do. It is for all of humanity. It is for everyone. So when we are, uh, when we are lifting, because see, sometimes when a woman is happy and proud about who she is and what she is and her power, you know, a woman that has been stripped away from her power for so long and for her to be excited and, you know, in her power, um, some men will find that intimidating and they'll be afraid of that. And they can't take that and they feel that their role as a man is being diminished. And it is not that at all. But see, this is why it is so important for each man and woman to stand their ground on who and what they are. Because nothing that anyone else is celebrating should ever take anything away from you. And so you understand when we have this wholeness within ourselves that we recognize what it is, these jealousies and these things and these, you know, they won't exist anymore. When a person recognizes the infinitaire within them and they know who they are, you're not going to feel intimidated, not by one single thing on the planet. Absolutely not. Ever. And so this is when you have a community of beings that's like this, there's nothing to control. Hence the reason for control. And this is why all of that is falling away. And this is why it's so important not to pay attention to all of the chaos that's going on out there, but to focus on what's going on within you. And this is why I invited you men to look at this because, see, you guys are dealing with your wives and your wives are going through these awakenings and these things that are happening with them that they are not able to control within them by themselves. It is a power that is working through them so that they can wake up to who they are. And that power is, <laughs> is unstoppable. And if you can overstand it, you can be a better partner and a better you could be a better partner, a better person for yourself, for the world, you know, because it's not that battle of the sexes. That's on some old matrix shit. Ain't no battle of the sexes in this, in this world, not in my world. Everybody knows their strengths, their gifts in my world. Everybody knows who they are and everybody shows up when they're supposed to with their gifts and they know exactly what to do. That's just how it works. Language, words, what? Not in my world. In my world, it's a feeling. In my world, I look at your eyes and I can see. I can see you just by looking at you. I can take in your energy when you walk into a room and your eyes can be closed and I can still see you. But that's just me. But I don't have anything that anybody else can't do. It's just a matter of how... How much you're willing to put in? How much you want to work? How much you're willing to, how worth it is it to you to realize your full self? When I learned about my power, 
I decided that I wanted to use it to the fullest of my ability. And when I asked God for that, and I asked God for that, like I think I might have been 11 years old and I didn't even know that I was asking for it. But when I asked for that, everything started coming. You know, I can see it now clearly. I didn't know it then, but I surely do know now that everything that we ask for, it is given. And I didn't ask for it with my mouth. I did not say, oh God, I want to be this or I want to do that. Can you give me that? No. My vibrational frequency asked for it. The things that I gave attention to asked for it. Where my heart was asked for it. Where my mind was asked for it. That's where it was. And peep this, where my mind was asked for it. And we're talking about the sacral chakra. Where my mind was, that's where it went. And that's what I got. It was a lot of sex. There was a lot of sex in my mind. There was a lot of sex in my mind. And so I created a lot of things through that sex. Good and bad. A lot of things. And so when I was a little girl and I was abusing that program of sexual, you know, trauma was introduced, sexual abuse rape, when that was introduced, everything shifted in my mind. And so I was able to compartmentalize to a certain point, but there were still other things that were seeping in that were still having me recreate these experiences in my life. So I can tell you today that as a 53-year-old woman, I have two children or offspring, right? There are adults. And I can tell you that all of all that was created was through all of that energy. And it was chaotic energy. And it was energy that I had to transform through the process. And for me, and for what I knew what was supposed to be for me, I've done fantastic and still doing better every single day. And a wise woman You know, she expanded on expectation. And I like what she said. It was, I'm Minister Ojeyemi. And I have no expectation about the future and what, you know, what what they're going to do and what's going to be, you know, later. I, I, I don't. There is just so much on my plate right now to just focus on me and what I'm going to do that, that, that there's, that's all that there is room for. And that's all it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be that way. Like when your children, when your grown seeds are adults, yeah, they have their business and you have your business. And that's how it's supposed to be. And sometimes it comes together, but it's so important that the respect, your 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 time and yourself and your space and who you are that respect is so important to have that for yourself because then see you nurture that within your family to be that for each other and all of these things are really important and these are all things that were lost in the sauce of what has happened throughout the years of this time and we now it's it's this is the best time in the world to be in But I'm going to say it again, you can't, you can't get there if you don't forgive that vagina, if you don't forgive your yoni. And for the men, forgive your mother's vagina, okay? The canal that you came through, forgive that one. And forgive your vagina that you had in other lifetimes, forgive that one. And recognize and know, and I wrote this to you, I said this to you, right? Right, I told you that your penis, your penis is also a hoe. Just because your penis is phallus symbol, it's a great powerful symbol. And trust me, I know, look, I have so much memory of my penis in my past lifetimes that I I, I wish I had a penis so bad in this lifetime because I recognize the power of that. And I know that that came from my insecurity, from the abuse that I had, that I felt that these, you know, energies overpowered me so much that I just knew their power. And they made me, you know, that made me have a, a, a... a fascination with it as well. So it's a mixture of both, but I digress. So it's important for you to remember, to remember who you are. Because really, organically, we're both, we all are. But see, the ones that have come as a divine feminine in this lifetime, well, you know, we just came to do work a little bit different. 
and it's just in our world. It's important to know this. It's important to know that the world that you affect is enough. The people that you affect that are around you, that surround you, it's enough. Like, you don't have to get on the soapbox and tell everybody, I am Goddess Shida here to save the world. I mean, you could do that if you feel like doing it. But you got to recognize that there's so many, it's a multidimensional universe right now. There's so many things going on. I don't know if you guys ever seen the, the Spider-Verse and all of that. That was a clear example of what the world looks like right now. Cada cabeza es un mundo. Every head is a world. So that means that every time that you meet somebody, you are now, it is their whole world and and this is important also for this group here in the sacral healing there is a video and I put it in the group I sent it to some of you guys already but it is what happens and um for those of you that are listening that are not in master vibe I'm gonna go ahead and give you the title of that so that so that you can check it out um it is called how sex with multiple partners destroys you what actually happens when you sleep around and the person i've been talking about this for many many years but this person this is reality of adultery the reality of adultery that's the name of the video you can find it on youtube and so this person explains it really well with a lot of visuals and see the energy the, the energy that happens when two people connect you know it, it depends on the way that you connect and if you're connecting through the sacral sexual nature oh you creating some stuff you creating some things and if people had this awareness, I think that people would function different. They would operate different. They would they would recognize that when you have when you're in a relationship and you want to get back at somebody, so you decide you're gonna sleep around. You're gonna sleep with somebody else. Recognize what that is. It's it's way more than just um uh what is it sex revenge, porn revenge, whatever that is. You know you yeah. <laughs> look. I don't even have to say it because look at the world right now. The world right now consists of all of those things that have occurred in the sexual nature through the minds of the people that have been, that that were not ready to be having any kind of sacral um, exchanges at all. But because of the way the world is, that's just what it is. And so, look, I've said a lot. I've talked through the whole time. I know I needed this. I'm so grateful. If you guys have been checking it out, um, we've been going through this process of what Master Vibration 13 is. And I personally am not available at this time for anyone in any direct healing. However, we do have quite a slew of I ministers that will be available for your healing and for your support if needed. What we are doing in this season of healing 2024 is we are offering the nine chakra cleanse where in during that cleanse you're able to identify with every chakra center you're able to recognize what is what it pertains to in your life what it's about what it looks like what it feels like and you will have a personal guide a master vibration 13 self-healing practitioner that's going to guide you through the process um, based on their experience of the nine chakra cleanse if you are interested in this service, you can send a text to 818-233-5776. Once again, that number is 818-233-5776. I would like to send a major, major, uh, a big old circle, big old circle ball of like a whole bunch of green, green glitter, lime green, dark green, like every green that you could, a big old burst to that and send it out to all of the people, all of the people that are having challenges in their relationships. And I'm not just talking about your partnerships, man, woman, 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 man, man. I'm talking about all of your relationships, specifically the relationship with yourself, because the relationship with yourself, when it is in chaos, it is going to cause chaos outside of you. So have grace on your partner when you're going through this process on the person that you love. The best thing that you can do in a time of chaos, I know it seems a little crazy. I know I'm going to tell you something really crazy, but the best thing that you can do for your partner in a time of chaos is separate from that energy. 
It is important to separate from that energy so that you can heal yourself. You ever see it in the movies, in the zombie movies, when they fit, when they, they got these scary movies and it's in the apocalypse time and somebody got this disease, this virus, and then if they spit on somebody, or if they touch somebody, or if they look at somebody a certain way, then, you know, then they get the virus too. And so no matter what, and it doesn't matter what it is, because it could be the kids, it could be the wife, it could be whatever, you know, they, 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 they touched it and now they got the virus. So this is what's happening in the world right now. You know, people are trying to heal trauma with these things of this idea of what love is. They think that love means to tolerate shit, that love means that you got to, oh, if you love me, then this is what you do. If you love me, you got to operate this way or that way or the other. If you love, you have to love yourself. And I know that that is just such a crazy idea at this time of chaos when we need each other. But is that whole saying, I, I, I know you don't get tired of hearing it, right? Put the mask on yourself before you put it on others. That, that concept is like for real, for real. It's in everything. So when these things are happening and you're experiencing a tiff or you're experiencing a shift with your partner, it is important to pull away from that energy. Here's another thing that is really important to know. Just because you have been with somebody for a thousand gazillion years, that is not as reason to stay in the relationship. Just because your partner is a twin flame, soulmate, blah, 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 whatever label you want to put on it, you do not have to put these things on so that you can tolerate a situation that is not good for both people. If one person is suffering in a couple, they are both suffering. You feel me? So it is important to have the separation at this time because there is no greater presence than the presence of the Most High. And when the Most High is calling for your attention, you better stand direct and direct. You better get it. The challenge that I no longer use that word is an opportunity to evolve, to be better, to do better, to be more, to do more. The more you do for yourself and the more you heal yourself, the more you could do for others. And it is my testimony to say that because had I not done the work that I've been doing, I, Minister SEG 13, would not be here telling you about this experience that I've had with my sexual trauma and my sexual healing because I really did want to keep that shit to myself. I really did. So, Ache. H H trece. I'm gonna yield the floor and ask if I Minister Symphony and I Minister Odayemi would like to interject or share. We have time. H, and so it is, and so. I want to, I opened it in that way and I want to end it with the rest of that message. Healing is a feeling There ain't no make believing It's with you alone You're dealing when you're on the ride to find your way back to you. Find your way back to you. You're at infinite. Find your way. Infinite, find your way back to you. Ache, ache, adios, hasta la próxima. Thank you.